Hello everyone, welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video I hope to recreate the Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft's journey to the moon and the landing and the rover emerging from the lander. And we are about a minute, well less than a minute away from launch, so let me get this started here. But we do have a slight problem. Uh, the moon's in the wrong place. Uh, <laughs> but this, this is not a problem that I'm going to have an issue with. I can fix that. I, I can figure it out. It'll be fine, but the moon is in the wrong place. So the launch was supposed to be at oops at uh, nine o five and seventeen seconds UTC on July fourteenth. So I'm just gonna start now, and if we're a few seconds off, it's not too bad. Two seconds off. So off we go, and this is my. Uh, Sri Harikota landscape here, so we'll get a good look at that. I did want to get that done before doing this simulated launch, so we get to enjoy the view here. As the GSLV Mark III is carrying our Chandrayaan 3 and its little rover. Okay, so. I've enjoyed that view a little bit. We're through Max Q. And if we take a look at the situation here, we're launching from here. And the moon is right there. It says target. And where the moon ought to be is right around here. Uh, so it's a little bit late, about seven, eight days late. And so what's going to happen is we're going to need to arrive at the moon seven or eight days late. And there's nothing I can do about that. Uh, as long as we're launching at this time, which is when they launched, then this is how it's going to happen. Because it doesn't actually go into a parking orbit, the mission I mean. Uh, the upper stage is going to boost it to a high orbit as we see the core engines ignite. And then the boosters will separate. Uh, the separation is timed. So it is according to the time when they separate the boosters on the GSLV Mark III. And the fairings will be timed as well. But the upper stage doesn't stop in a parking orbit and then do an, an additional burn in order to start the spacecraft on its way to the moon. It's a single burn out of the launch. And therefore, we don't have a whole lot of choice as far as when we're going to meet up with the moon. The moon ought to have been over there. I've seen all the simulations. It ought to be over there somewhere. And somebody's got to mention Principia. I assume that Principia, which gives M-body physics to things, would have it more accurate. But I'm not using Principia here. That would be a different kind of work, trying to figure out Principia with this particular mission. And maybe I'll do that some other day. But this will not cause any problems for us uh, encountering the moon. The only thing is that we're going to have to wait a little bit longer in Earth orbit. Okay, pairings have separated. The entry into lunar orbit was August 5th, but the landing was August 23rd. So if we're seven or eight days late, it's not going to be a big deal. Okay, separation of the core stage and ignition of the CE-20 engine. We will still have some residual inclination. That's due to our timing, the timing of the launch. And that's fine because we're going to end up wanting to be in a polar orbit around the moon. If we wanted to be in an equatorial orbit around the moon, we wouldn't want much inclination. But a little bit of inclination will help us get into a polar orbit around the moon. So this is just going to do one continuous burn, lifting our apoapsis to 36,500 kilometers. The initial orbit was 170 kilometers by 36,500, and we will see how well we match that. Probably we're going to end up having a slightly higher periapsis instead of 170 kilometers, probably something like 200. Okay, approaching the end of the burn, we're looking for 36,500. Uh, a little bit more than that, but that's okay. We'll be boosting up further. But 36,927 by 206, let's call it. 
And no promise there. Let's separate. So, if we did just immediately want to go, we would actually be able to encounter the moon, but not very well. You can see a sort of bare encounter very far away from the moon right there. There is a early earthbound maneuver on July 15th, but it doesn't raise the orbit apoapsis that much. I would like to correct the inclination, and I think I can afford it. Not correct it all the way, just a mild maneuver for that. So, our little coasting stage has a single engine. It is 0.8 kilonewtons. About 310 seconds of ISP. It's just one engine. The lander has four engines. But they decided it would be alright to have a total burn time of an hour and 45 minutes on this one. So that's why we have to do these earthbound maneuvers, a uh, set of five of them before translunar injection, because the burn time of this stage is so low that if we tried to do it all at once it wouldn't be very accurate. And we'd end up having to start over here and end over there and that wouldn't be any good. Earthbound Maneuver 2 occurred on July 17th, so we will wait. We'll do the rest of the maneuvers as they seem to have had them. Okay, it is July 17th, and we are going to boost up to uh, 41... 1,603. Well, not that accurate. 41,000 will do. Okay, that'll be close enough. So, next one is July 18th. And so, just two orbits away. And this is to 51,400. Okay, 51,400. Next one on July 20th, and that will be to 71,000 kilometers. Okay, that's good enough. All right. So, the last earthbound maneuver before translunar injection was on the 25th actually, and it'll be to 127,000 kilometers. Note that our orbit is basically a one-day orbit right now. And then it'll be translunar injection, but we're gonna have to wait extra time for that one, because the moon just got to where it was supposed to be in the first place, basically. Okay, ignition. Okay, 127,000... 616 kilometers versus 603 kilometers, but close enough. Now we wait. Oh, maybe... Hmm. <laughs> uh, maybe we've got... Uh, maybe it's... is it not in the wrong place? I don't know. Uh, what we've got is in four days we've got a transfer out, which is actually earlier. And then arriving at the 19 day, I don't understand this at all. Why would it take 19 days to get there? Oh, sorry, so I can just, we've got an Earth apoapsis in nine days after burning out in four days. That's all right, that's normal. But why is there a moon periapsis in 19 days when we have that? That means it does translunar injection and then comes back and then hits the moon. That's strange. <laughs> I, I don't I don't think that's what we really want to do. And that's definitely not what they did. But it just so happens that that's a possibility. Okay, we've got sort of a polarish approach here, but it's not exactly where I want it to be. Um, we could probably do a mid-course correction. They didn't actually do one, but we'll just call it, you know, a lack of Principia. A lack of M-body physics causing that. I also don't know whether they had their periapsis above the South Pole or the North Pole. Either way, they're eventually going to get into a circular orbit first before landing, so it doesn't particularly matter. Anyway, we have to wait 14 days and 18 hours before doing this, 
and then we'll figure it out at that point. But at least we've got a transfer. So the actual translunar injection burn was July 31st, and they arrived in lunar orbit on August 5th. Our transfer, again, because the moon was uh, a little bit more than a week out of place, will be August 9th, and we will arrive there five days later, August 14th, but we will still be well ahead of time to manage a landing on the 23rd, so we'll aim for that. Okay, the node is wandering off, and I don't want to wander off with it, so we will do a correction. I mean, this is not too bad, it just needs to get a little bit closer. It is 70 degrees south, so maybe... And the reason they would have wanted 70 degrees south is to make sure that they had communication lines back to Earth instead of like landing directly at the South Pole. Directly at the South Pole, probably the there'd be a horizon issue trying to communicate with Earth because we don't have a whole lot of satellites in orbit around the moon that can help with communication. And so we have a very minor correction to do here. All right, in a day. So finally, after many burns, Chandrayaan-3 departing Earth. Well, not completely departing Earth orbit yet, but certainly head out with a planned encounter with the Moon. Ironically, we seem to be increasing our inclination here. Maybe I shouldn't have done that initial inclination correction burn. Looks like we're actually increasing the inclination back to where it was before. I feel like they probably would have had the periapsis on the Earth-facing side, so probably the opposite. But we don't have the communication problem right now. I'm not doing communication lines, so we don't have to worry about that. I'm just going to try to get it into a low orbit and do the landing at this point. We're a little bit high over the moon. I'll try and correct that. 164 is what we wanted. Okay, we'll take that. Let's continue. So, it's first capture burn. Brought it down to 18,000 kilometers. So, something like that. Earth is over there. The moon is here. So right now we're nine days ahead of landing. Uh, this sort of orientation makes sense because we'll be over there by the time we land and then our orbit, one side of it will be facing Earth. Right now it's sort of perpendicular to Earth, so that's not great for the landing purposes, but it's okay for right now because right now we are completely in communication with Earth all the way around. Okay, that's about what we wanted, and I'm going to do the other burns immediately so that we can get back on track here. So now that we're in a low orbit here, that is the actual landing location for Chandrayaan-3, and these are the coordinates, roughly speaking, uh, well, within a few seconds of degree. And it's a very good landing location if you want to get as close to the South Pole as possible because any further south than that, and you're not going to have good communications with Earth. And also, probably at the time that they landed, it had good solar exposure. There was nice sunlight and everything. Uh, right now, we are not in line with that. We are on the far side of the moon when it comes to our pass over the South Pole. And we are also going to be in the dark. So... Uh, I'm just going to wait until we are in line with that location and try to land there instead of trying to get the right date. Now, if it happens to be the right date, that's fine, but I think we would like to be facing Earth and also in daylight. So that'll be the priority rather than the date at this point. I could land on the 23rd, but I think this will be better if we wait. Here on the 22nd, we're in line with it, but it's in the dark. So, I will wait longer. Okay, it's a week after the actual landing. It's August 30th, 
And I think the landing site is now somewhat in daylight, just barely. And I think we'll try to land there, but of course it's not under our orbit right now. So I'm going to use the orbiter to help us out here. And we're going to tilt our orbit. Hopefully not using too much effort. And just prepare a landing. The orbiter may or may not survive this. So don't tell us, Ro. Okay, ignition. Okay, separation and ignition. Okay, that should be good enough for now. Now the RCS placement on this is not great as far as I'm concerned. So I'm worried about that. Also, I can't exactly see how well my path is going over that location. It depends on the angle of the camera. So I'll try my best, but we're probably not going to land exactly there. Timing is also important. This stage is 12 minutes and 26 seconds. Okay, ignition. Our pass is a little bit high because I didn't do the preparatory work to get a low pass, but we should have enough delta V for this. So, down we come. Looks like we might be just a little bit north, but I'm not going to try to force that. And we might be going a little bit past it too. We'll see about that. But we are in daylight, so that's good. That's interesting. I just uh, knocked it a little bit with the control stick, and it went sort of haywire there. I'm just going to control stick it the rest of the way down, maybe. It might be that the rover is a little bit imbalanced in the bay, I'm not sure. Oh, oh, um, I was pushing down on the stick, but then it went the other way. Okay, there's some weird stuff going on with this. Well, we're landing about here-ish. So it'll be a bit off. About 10 kilometers or so. I'm just gonna try and land safely. Well, I don't know if I can go without turning the engines off briefly. So let me try and kill the horizontal speed a bit. Oh, there it's pitching in a way that I didn't want it to. And it's still pitching in a way I don't want it to. I'm trying to push down and stick in, it's still going up. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah. Oh, 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 we did a hop a little bit early. But, all right, all right, we're down. Uh, yeah, there's something about the RCS configuration on here that's a little bit troublesome. I'm not sure what. But, anyway, we are here. And, barely. Uh, deploy ramp. But then again, we were coming on a suboptimal pass because we were coming in very high. They initially got down to 25 kilometers above the target location uh, and then started the descent. Uh, we did sort of get to 25 kilometers but it was uh, our periapsis was on the opposite side which is not good. All right so let's try and release the rover. I didn't make a particularly good rover. I'm no rover specialist here. Um, it's sort of skidding along the way. Uh, brakes. Okay. Mm, okay, that way. Oh no! One of our uh, oh, all of our wheels broke from overstressing. What? <laughs> okay, I blame Kerbal for that. There's no excuse for that. Anyway, we got the rover out. Uh, I don't know why the rover wheels all broke immediately. That is uh, strange. It's probably because they had to be made very small. Uh, they were tweak scaled very small and maybe that reduced their tolerances in a way that was not very good. 
But anyway, there you have it. Chandrayaan-3 safely deployed uh, close to its target location. Not exactly, but uh, within, let's say, 10 kilometers or something like that. All right. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.